Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. We have a short week this week because of Memorial Day. I hope you had a really good one, healthy, happy, didn't eat anything I wouldn't eat and all that good stuff. So anyway, um, we'll do announcements and video clips on Thursday for a change since um, we didn't have Tuesday video clips and just a couple of things. Uh, next week on Wednesday night starts the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course and that is um, CMEs for doctors, 39 CMEs for doctors, 39 CEs for nurses, nurse practitioners, and 39 CEs for dietitians. Lay people can take this course. We have the celebrity instructors in the uh, summertime. That's Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Barnard, Dr. Goldhammer, Dr. Moss, Dr. Schultz, Dr. Stanger, Dr. Wall. I mean, all kinds of phenomenal people who you want to learn from. And um, you can still register for that. Uh, we always have a packed class. We always have people from all over the world participating, but it's live and instruction that you can do from your living room sitting in your jammies with your cat. That's how I teach it, by the way. Nobody knows that. Thank God for phones, right? Um, so that's the first thing. And then on um, the following Monday, um, I will start the 10 class course on cancer and nutrition and treatment options, which I'm um, very excited about teaching this. It's a new course for us. And um, it runs for 10 Mondays. I think we take off the 4th of July, uh, Monday, that third, I think it's the 3rd of July. We don't, we don't have class, but other than that, it's 10 Mondays in the summertime. And then if you live in driving distance of Columbus, Neil Barnard's going to be here to talk about his Escaping the Tre Cheese Trap book on June 19th. It's free, but do call us and make a reservation because we always pack the house for Dr. Barnard. He is a favorite and he never disappoints. He is always, incredibly um, informative and funny. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, he is so good with people and he, I always learn something new. I've listened to him talk. I can't even tell you how many times I always learn something new. All right, so I picked a couple of topics uh, for today that are real important to talk about. The first one has to do with iodine supplementation. Iodine is a micronutrient that's needed in order for the thyroid to produce thyroid hormones. Recommended daily intake for iodine for adults is 150 micrograms a day. It really isn't very much. Americans and many people in westernized countries are advised that they must consume iodized salt in order to meet their iodine needs. And then in addition to that, we add iodine to bread products and other fortified foods. Now you can get the iodine that you need from foods like sea vegetables, cranberries, navy beans, strawberries, and potatoes. Um, although there's a little bit of a caution with sea vegetables because their iodine content is so high. And so what we want to talk about today is not the deficiency of iodine intake, but really the danger of it taking too much iodine. And that's so often the case in um, westernized countries where people are talking about deficiency and it's, I, you know, I, I just shake my head at this because excess is what we have problems with. So a lot of people do consume more than the RDA for iodine, and for most people this isn't a problem, particularly if it's, if it's a slight increase over the RDA. But for those who have thyroid disease, for pregnant women and the elderly, higher iodine intake, even a little bit, may not be safe. An article in Pediatrics reported the case of a 27-year-old pregnant woman who was taking supplemental iodine to treat her hypothyroidism. Ultrasound showed that the fetus had developed a goiter. The reason was that the supplemental iodine had suppressed fetal thyroid production, which resulted in hypothyroidism and a goiter. When iodine was discontinued, the goiter was reduced and the child was born with no airway constriction, but he did suffer bilateral hearing loss. And so there is some permanent um, uh, damage. There is permanent damage that can be done by taking too much iodine while pregnant. Unfortunately, this is not an isolated incident. Several cases of congenital hypothyroidism in infants have been reported due to women taking iodine uh, supplements during pregnancy. High intake of sea vegetables during pregnancy has been shown to result in hypothyroidism as well in neonates, and not all cases that were reported were transient. In, in other words, in the one case report that I mentioned, the goiter went away. That's not always the case. Uh, sometimes the damage is permanent. Um, infant hypothyroidism has been reported for breastfed babies whose moms were consuming high amounts of seaweed. This is especially concerning since seaweed consumption is often as a, uh, encouraged as a means for increasing uh, milk production. 
a review of case reports, population studies, and experimental studies from the mid-1880s to the 1988 concerning iodine exposure concluded that exposure to high levels of iodine in food, dietary supplements, topical medications, and iodinated contrast media can cause many issues, and these include thyroiditis, goiter, hypothyroidism, and in some cases, acute reactions. The researchers wrote that while some people might be able to tolerate high doses of iodine, many people cannot, and that people should be much more cautious than they generally are about this. In spite of this, there are many alternative healthcare practitioners who continue to recommend iodine supplementation to hypothyroid patients, and even some people who have what they call um, subclinical hypothyroidism, not detectable by a uh, blood test, but based on a vague list of symptoms that almost all of us would answer positively to most of the questions, and this is actually not a good idea. Uh, this can make hypothyroidism worse, not better, particularly when the doses are high. So if um, dietary change, weight loss, reduction in estrogen levels has been shown to reverse hypothyroidism in many cases, in those cases that don't resolve, medication may be needed, but supplemental iodine should not be part of the treatment plan. Um, in rare cases, supplemental iodine is needed, very rare cases, enough that we don't even keep it on hand here. Um, and when it is here, it's locked up so that we don't make a mistake and give it to the wrong person. So. Um, caution is needed. Uh, this is a reference article. I know some of you like to see this type of thing. Just as a reminder, these articles with references are posted in the Health Brace Library within a uh, very short time after the video clips air, and you can find them there if you're not a subscriber, call our office, and you can become one. So uh, bottom line there, uh, less not more iodine is the direction you want to go. Um, now, on to the next topic. A lot of people think that NSAIDs are safe, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They're sold over the counter, and um, I've spoken often about this. I am just very upset when I turn on the television I see these ads with people taking these drugs every day and talking about, well, my drug is better because I only have to take it a couple times a day and you have to take yours every four hours, and again, promoting the idea that taking them every day is just fine. Um, new research shows that the drugs are dangerous and significantly increases the risk of myocardial infarction. Now, this isn't like the first time this has happened. New research shows this, but there's a lot of other research that has showed a connection as well. Um, the risk increases during the first week of use. It's dose dependent, and the higher the dose, the higher the risk. According to Michelle Bally, PhD, one of the researchers, she says, quote, the new research on NSAIDs reinforces what physicians know already, that patients should use the smallest possible dose for the shortest possible time. That is exactly the opposite of what is happening with these drugs. People use as much as they need to kill the pain, and they often take them for decades at a time, and it's incredibly unsafe to do it. So the researchers conducted this particular study because previous studies have linked both traditional NSAIDs and COX-2 inhibitors to increased risk of myocardial infarction, but the timing, dose, and treatment duration were uncertain, and the differences in risk associated with different drugs hadn't been evaluated. So the drugs that were included in this review were traditional NSAIDs, like ibuprofen and naproxen, and Vioxx. The analysis included over 446,000 people. There were over 61,000 cases of myocardial infarction and over 385,000 controls. It was a pretty big cohort. Overall, the increase for myocardial infarction was between 20% and 50% as compared with people who didn't use the drugs, and it was lower. It was not lower for traditional NSAIDs as compared with Vioxx. So this idea that I, I think you might remember I've talked quite a bit about Vioxx and the fact that um, one FDA official who testified in front of Congress, um, and I saw it on C-SPAN with my own eyes, and it's in the minutes of, of um, congressional hearings, said that as many as 128,000 people might have been killed by Vioxx uh, as a result of heart attacks from taking the drug. So the rest of the drugs in the class are not any safer. Uh, the increased risk was found to be almost immediate for all NSAIDs and all classes. Higher doses increased risk even more, particularly for ibuprofen at uh, 1,200 milligrams per day, naproxen at 750 milligrams per day, and Vioxx at lower than 25 milligrams per day. The risk doesn't increase over time, but it doesn't go away either, and the risk is thought to be due to the um, inhibition of uh, the COX-2 enzyme, which increases blood pressure. Now, some argue that the risk associated with taking NSAIDs is considerably lower than for taking opioid drugs, and I think that that's probably true, but there are better options. In other words, instead of choosing the best of the bad options, 
drugs, this drug or that drug, why don't we look at better options for relieving, relieving pain like exercise, yoga, acupuncture, chiropractic, uh, diet, weight loss, all kinds of things that people can do to reduce their pain that are considerably safer and not only um, will get rid of the pain but, but get rid of other health issues and prevent other health issues from developing too. So the take home point from today, no iodine supplementation, stay away from iodine and, and dietary supplements and fortified foods and um, be careful about the use of pain pills. And, and look at it this way, pain is your body screaming at you that something is wrong. Covering up the pain is not the answer. Getting to the cause of the pain is the answer. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Tuesday with more news.